states amongst the, the nonce community. Like nobody's nonced more. Yeah. Nobody's nonced harder, nobody's yeah. nonced longer than No than one's Jim, nonced better. Jimmy Savile. He's man, he's like and also he did all that nonsense while making some of the best Saturday evening television I have ever seen. And raising millions for spinal charities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we all know that anybody who's raising money for charity, anybody who's uh, you know, presenting an image of virtue is, uh, you know, I think Jim, Jimmy Savile proves that they're just doing it for purely virtuous reasons. Hello and welcome to Clown World episode, not really sure what episode it is, but we're here with Francis Foster. Hello mate, it's good to be back. Um, you know what, you know what I love about this this podcast mate, it's a professionalism. Because yeah. I'm currently holding a mic that doesn't fucking work. Yeah. I know, but that's what we do. That's how we roll. You I, know, how I, many episodes have you done? This? Yes. I, I think I've done about six. How many like times that. have I been on? Four? Yeah, I think <laughs> it's pretty much me and you, Francis. Yeah. You're the only person willing to turn up. Yeah, I'm the only one willing to come to your house and yeah. do this. And I, we're, we're going to be talking today. We're going to be talking a bit more about the riots. We're talking about the riots and the Patreon version of this. Uh, but we're also going to be talking about, we're going to talk some more about the riots and the, the, some of the sentencing has been particularly harsh. Yeah. We've also got uh, the, the bias, the media bias exposed in the USA when yeah. Stephen Colbert's audience laughed at a little line yeah. about CNN that they weren't supposed to laugh at. We'll look at the Olympics. We've got some, uh, we've got some polling results about reform. Reform. Yeah. Man, did you see this? Reform have, like, have leapt ahead in the polls. So Labour's uh, poll lead collapse has, poll, Labour's poll lead has collapsed just after just 40 days in office. Yeah. I mean, it's been a quite eventful 40 days. But Reform are now in second place. So Labour have, got, have dropped six points to 33%. Uh, the Tories remain steady on 20%. And Reform um, have jumped up to 21%. So Reform are now effectively the official opposition. <laughs> the the only issue is this is so this is I don't know why they're even bothering doing an election poll because we are five years away from an election. So this is essentially meaningless. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah, by that time, in five years, we've already have defended into civil war, then martial law, yeah. and then Keir Starmer would have been announced that he is Prime Minister in perpetuity. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he's the only one who can keep us safe. He'll bring through some law. He loves making laws. Yeah. He'll bring through some law that makes him emperor forever. Yeah. Man, and I, I can I can see it I can see it happening. I love Keir Starmer because he keeps us safe from jokes, but not from <laughs> knife crime. It's a beautiful combination. And I love Keir Starmer because I don't want to go to jail. And the only way you can <laughs> not go to jail is by saying that you love Keir Starmer and all the wonderful laws he brings through. Yeah. Uh, talking of talking of which, the sentencing for some of the some of the rioting rioters, uh, you know, some of it. All right, you know, there's there's been some horrible. Um, you know, violence. I saw you know a policeman getting hit with a with a brick or something. It was it was it was brutal. And I you know man, I feel sorry for the police because they're sort of they're sort of forced into that situation. They're told to uh, to go out there. They they don't get a choice in it. So yeah. it's it's not them, and it's not them that's you know making these ridiculous laws. It's not them saying you must investigate Reginald D Hunter for a joke. But this uh, this is. You know, we're told the the rioting was all EDL. So this is this is a couple who joined the Hartlepool riots um, after a bingo session. They've each been jailed for twenty six months. It's a, I think it's a, yeah. I think it's a gay couple. Uh, yeah, like Stephen Malin, fifty four, and his partner Ryan Shears, twenty nine. Already, they should be jailed for that age gap. <laughs> yeah, but it's all right. They're gay. It's like you know, it's like being Eastern European. Or no, something. man, Stephen, that is grooming. No, that that, 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 is... that that's grooming. We need to jail him. He's only twenty nine. He's not free to make his own choices. Man, if we're going to talk about grooming in yeah. the north of England, uh, there's some much there's some much worse grooming that's been going on, and that's part of the reason the riots. It received so much fuel and people yeah. were so angry. Uh, so yeah, he's 29. He's not. He's not 11 years old. He's not. What's he old. doing at bingo? Well, this is the thing, man. You think you think the EDL are going to bingo? No. I no. mean, they might do now because it's been so long since the EDL. So some of them are probably in their 50s and 60s. Yeah, but one one of them is apparently. I mean, uh, he's he's 54. Yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, I think it's blatantly obvious he's not, he's not so, they're not like these right wing fascist thugs sitting at home, you know, sharpening their swastikas or whatever. It's like, this is a gay couple who are at the bingo. They, apparently they came out of the bingo, they'd had a few drinks. Yeah. And uh, there was a, there, there was a riot going on. Yeah. And they refused to, they refused to move or they tried to push through the cord and to, to get home or go, go somewhere. 
And um, one, of the, one of them was bitten on the hip by a police dog. I saw that picture. It was yeah. quite, quite brutal. Um, but yeah, so they got, they got some hefty sentences. We've seen other sentences handed down. We've seen children as young as 12 being convicted. Listen, as a former teacher, I agree with it. <laughs> Little pricks fucking deserve it. But that's like something they do in China. Yeah. You know what I mean? In fact, I think, you know, I think in China, don't, don't they generally let children off? I think, no. I think Britain is now more brutal than China when it comes to policing these protests. Listen, jailing kids is the only way they're going to learn. <laughs> it's the only way they're going to learn. It's the only way. Throw them in jail... And that way, that'll wake them up, shake them up a bit. And you know, you know what else uh, I saw? So people are... Um, I, I saw this guy interviewed on Sky and he said, you know, so the rioters are getting sent to jail. And he said uh, an extra sort of punishment for them in, when they're in jail is the, uh, is the their Muslim gangs, yeah. Asian gangs in the prisons uh, who will then, you know, brutally beat them and all the rest of it. And it's like, man, that... And... People are being told that uh, if they do appear, whether they're pleading guilty or not guilty, they're very unlikely to get bail. Um, and if they do end up in prison, somebody who told me, somebody who knows about these things, told me that you know any right-wing, far-right protester landing up in jail, uh, well, you know, they can expect um, a pretty cold reception from um, what he says are uh, Asian gangs inside prison who will be looking out for them and he was saying it like almost like they kind of deserve it and it's like no that doesn't sound like justice that sounds like we've got some sort of messed up dystopian system and like you know Keir Starmer's all we've got to keep safety is so important it's like I think people who get sent to jail deserve to be safe in no, jail. No, they don't. They deserve to be stabbed these by are, a Muslim gang. No, right? these, are, these aren't these are nonces or anything. These are just... That, that's just a couple of guys who came out the bingo. No, no, listen. Got carried away. Listen, what they uh, what they did was uh, worse than nonsing uh, in the eyes of Keir Starmer, who is yeah. our Lord and Saviour. Uh, he is a great... So he's a great, great man. ruler. He's great. a great man. He's so, a dear leader. He's our dear leader. Mm. He's our dear leader, and he just wants to keep us safe. So I just want to say, Keir, we're, all of you, all of us on Clown World and everybody who I associate with, we absolutely love and adore you and respect you. Uh, so whatever you decide to do, you crack on, mate. And if that means you put someone in prison and then uh, they end up getting stabbed, uh, maybe by a Muslim gang, then that's what they deserve. That's, that's just what happens. Yeah. Some, some of the other people have been sent to, sent to prison. Uh, somebody got an eight-week jail term for three Facebook posts. Um, the first one showed a group of men, Asian in appearance, at Egremont Crab Fair, uh, with the <laughs> caption... <laughs> it's very specific. Hey. Uh, with a caption, coming to a town near you. Now, I mean, I don't know why, you know, if they're Muslims, I don't know why they'd be at a crab fair, because that's, uh, that's shellfish. Yeah, that's so, haram. Uh, it's haram, I, yeah. I believe. It's, yeah, you wouldn't find Jews there either. Yeah, and it, uh, like there's, a, there's another... He, he's, he, put, he put another couple of memes up... Um, there was one uh, showing a group of men, Asian in appearance, leaving a boat onto Whitehaven Beach, uh, and it had the caption, when it's your, on your turf, then what? Uh, and a final image showed a group of men, Asian in appearance again, wielding knives in front of the Palace of Westminster. There was also a crying white child in a Union flag t-shirt. This was captioned with the words, coming to a town near you. Now, obviously, classic boomer AI generated meme. You know, yeah. crying child in Union yeah. flag t-shirt, yeah. you know what I mean? <laughs> Asian men. Like, but it's not, I mean, it's distasteful. If my mate shared it, I'd be like, man, what are you doing? But it's, it's not, no, I mean, I'd be like, I'd be like, <laughs> Leo come Kirsch on. Leo likes it. No, I'd be like, I'd be like, come on, you're not, you're not a boomer. Like, yeah. you, you need to be, you need to be more zoomery yeah. with your, with your uh, dog whistle. Yeah. Uh, but no, like, I mean, it's not, like, it's distasteful. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's particularly nice, but it's not, like, inaccurate. There is, <laughs> there is... You see, every every day there's like you know just yesterday there was like seven hundred more people come across on on the boats. You know there's huge Muslim growth in the population. They are there's there's more of them. He sees that, yeah, and he's not allowed to make any comment on it. And it's like illegal if he makes a comment. That just doesn't sound. But fair. but here's here's the point. Why are you surprised? Well, I'm surprised because it's not the, the courts are supposed to be completely independent of you know any sort of politicking or anything like that, and they're supposed to be objective. And if, if you're not doing something that's, like, I get that inciting violence, inciting racial hatred, that's bad. Something like this seems to you know 
fall well below the boundary for anything but, like that. But do you remember that that very interesting video, which is Keir Starmer talking to Sadiq Khan about cracking down on Islamophobia? Yeah. I think it's Eid Mubarak. Thank you, Keir. It's Eid, it's a really important time for the Muslim community. Because it's Eid, it's also a time, I think, where all of us are able to celebrate the you know, incredible contribution that Muslims have made uh, to our country. We see it in business, we see it in culture, we see a better Britain. One of the things that is coming up over and over again um, is Islamophobia. And, well, you can see the stats, you can see the numbers rising, particularly since October the 7th. Although we shouldn't fall into the trap of thinking that before October the 7th, um, this was all heading in the right direction. It's been far too high for far too long. Clearly, we need to just say over and over again, um, Islamophobia is intolerable. Uh, it can never, ever be uh, justified. And we have to continue with a zero tolerance approach. And I think there's more we can do in government. There's certainly stuff online, which I think needs tackling much more robustly than it is at the moment. What I'm hoping, Keir, is your experience as a prosecutor means you'll be thinking about the strategies we can use to make sure we take action against those who break the law. So he, like, to be fair to Keir, he actually made it pretty clear what he was going to do when he came to power. Yeah. He made it pretty clear. So what the people, do? yeah, he, they were going to crack down on Islamophobia. What does that mean, though? Well, what that means is that, you know, criticism of a religion, it means mocking of the religion. It means having concerns or pointing out things, uh, problems within the religion. Mm. And people who make points like this you're just not going to be able to do this. Right. You're just not. And he was pretty honest about it. And actually, I don't think we can legitimately complain, particularly those people who voted Labour. You're like, well, what did you expect? What did yeah. you expect? He said he was going to do it. If anything, he's just being honest. Yeah. You know, that's the way, that's where we are. This is meant to be comedy, mate. But why, why is he doing it as well? I think I, I genuinely think it comes from uh, it comes from a position of he uh, he wants control. He believes, look, the word, the left genuinely believe that words are violence. Yeah. You know. So if you think, and let, let's just take it, and let's just obviously that statement is ridiculous, but let's just take it to mean what uh, to take it. Let's just take it literally. Words are violence. So if words are violence, then people sharing memes like this or making, uh, you know, saying fuck Allah or well, no, uh, shove your Allah up your ass or whatever it was that yeah. he said, right? Then the, that's violence. And what you need to do with violence is you need to crack down on it. And if you look at the riots solely through the prism that they were incited by racial hatred and you don't actually look at the reasons behind why, yeah. then logically it makes complete sense why he would approach it in this fashion. Yeah, I mean, I... I, I disagree with you a bit. I think the left are utopian and I think they've got this idea that, you know, they really believe, you know, diversity is strength, multiculturalism is, you know, leads to a stronger society, even though the evidence we've got from Lebanon, from the Balkans, from Rwanda, yeah. <laughs> like suggests that actually diversity causes, uh, causes sectarian strife and causes, you know, yeah. what, what, what we've seen and, you know, especially in Lebanon, it caused a, you know, 25 year civil war. Uh, in the Balkans, it led to you know an, uh, an attempt to genocide, um, and we're seeing it now in you know Azerbaijan and Armenia. It's happening in a lot of places. Whenever you've got two um, religious sects, you know Christianity and Islam next to each other, they you know they don't they don't get on. And I, I feel like we've we've sort of invited Islam into the country, and uh, now there's forty thousand Islamists on terror watch lists, and. I just feel like, you know, we've invited it in and then we're having to pay all this money to security services mm. to make sure, you know, they don't blow up a Taylor Swift concert or something. You know, like with what was what apparently there was a plot in Vienna, three ISIS uh, radicalized online teenagers uh, uh, wanted to blow up the Taylor Swift concerts on behalf of ISIS. So um, I think the left have got this utopian idea that, yeah, multiculturalism is the best thing, diversity is strength. So they're trying to force reality to fit that paradigm. So if anybody says, you know, puts a hand up and says, I don't think diversity is a strength, I don't like this very much, then they're the one that's committed the crime. And for some reason, they, 
the left don't seem to be doing much to stop, you know, the the real issues like the grooming gangs, any sort of uh, any sort of terrorist violence. I mean, obviously it's you know it's illegal, it's against the law and stuff, but they're not. You know, you'd think if if the basically if there was if there was far right, an organised far right mm. group that had you know these special far right prayer houses, yeah, where they, you know they went and learned <laughs> the doctrine of the far right and you know shared whatever ideas and yeah. were funded by far right countries overseas, yeah, and they sometimes went out and they uh, you know they they committed terrorist atrocities, man. That would get shut down immediately. Of you know course I mean? it would. Of Instead, course it would. The, the government, Labour wouldn't be passing laws making it illegal to criticise the far right. Instead, they wouldn't be saying, oh, that's far right phobia. Yeah. But it's because, you know, the far right are white. Let's just be honest about this. Yeah. It's because they're white. And because they're white, it's seen as perfectly legitimate to then go after these people. Look. The, the reality is there is a small, tiny, tiny percentage of people who are genuine far right, mm. but it's seen as legitimate, le- legitimate to go after them, crack down on them, you know, and uh, arrest them, all the rest of it. Mm. But if you have somebody who has widely, uh, you know, uh, problematic views on the other side, well, then you can't do that because that's Islamophobic. And the problem is, is that the left is the people on the left and let's be fair about this, a Conservative Party, because there's a lot of people in the Conservative, the Conservatives did nothing to sort this problem out. Yeah. In, in 14 years in power, they were worse than useless, right? A lot of these problems were actually exacerbated under Conservative government. Yeah. Because they go, oh my God, but why are you saying that? My friend Abdul is Muslim and he's a heart surgeon. You know, and well, it's yeah. be- because it's, what, it's, it's that sort of personal bias. Because I've, yeah. I've spoken to to people who've said like, oh, there's no there's no problem with uh, you know with anybody integrating in this country because uh, yeah, I, I went to the London School of Economics and we had a lot of people from uh, you know there was people from Saudi Arabia, there's people from Syria, there's people from yeah, and it's like yeah, I don't think it's the ones who went to the London School of Economics, the yeah. ones you met. But then you know, everybody who's in power, you know, is from a sort of. A, Pretty elite, elite yeah. strata of society. Yeah. So of course the people they meet tend to be from an elite strata of society. And yeah. They're not the ones uh, running a kebab shop and uh, you know and, and uh, grooming grooming girls yeah. on the on the side because they can give them free bottles of pop or whatever. Yeah, and so that's the thing. Like you know, it also depends where it is, where you where these people come from, what type of Islam that they follow, and what strata of society. So. If you import, and so if someone comes in who is, I don't know, an eye surgeon and from, you know, a very wealthy family in Pakistan. An ISIS surgeon. Yeah. And and what, and he's an eye surgeon. I doubt he's going to be radicalizing people. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you import people from poorer backgrounds who follow a particular type of Islam, which is fundamentally more radical, yeah. then that's going to be a problem. And that's what I don't understand about uh, this government when I say government I don't mean like Labour or Tories I mean like the, the whole the, the whole thing, the Home party. Office the uni party or you know, the, the Jews the civil service <laughs> we're going to have to cut that man because somebody will somebody will be like you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> somebody will come oh my god you did it I've rage to hunted myself yeah like you can't there's no room for irony anymore yeah it's, it's too difficult a thing for them to tackle because you, you, you've got to be like to tackle the issue of mass immigration, you got to be mean. You got to be a bit mean. What they're doing in Poland is they're now using live ammo to enforce border border control. And that's a European country using live ammo Barely. to enforce the enforce the border. No, they're doing it, man. And they got like a big fence, man. Like they they got it regularly patrolled because basically what um what Russia's been doing is uh, flying people in from. The Middle East and Africa, and then busing them to the border, busing yeah. them through Belarus to the border with Poland, with border with the European Union, um, to basically precipitate a sort of migrant crisis and, and destabilize that area and, and yeah. destabilize. You know, it's, they're using migration, they're using forced migration as a as a kind of weapon, um, which is going to backfire on Putin horrifically because, of course, diversity is a strength. Yeah, so exactly. Imagine and how strong it's making us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're coming for you, Vlad. Um, no, like. I think the problem is as well. It's what what is it? What's it's exposed is our immigration system. We don't have one. 
Yeah. It's not fit for purpose. We don't have control over our borders, yeah. which means we're not a legitimate country, yeah. which is obviously incredibly worrying. And also as well, like, there are people who are genuine refugees. You know, but that's, you know, but and, and there are genuine people who are fleeing, fleeing tyrannical regimes yeah. and looking to come to countries in order in order to live a better life but they're getting lost well the and the thing is like there are people fleeing tyrannical regimes but the people like those but countries we're going to be that's going to be us soon mate well those those <laughs> countries those countries have terrible regimes have yeah. terrible human rights because of the culture of the, the you know the governments and the systems arise from a culture and then so if you bring the culture into the UK like, you might be helping that individual person. Yeah. You're bringing that culture into the UK. And now, you know, you, you've got places in the UK where it is... And also because we totally bend over backwards to accommodate everyone. Yeah. There's a guy, like, the same time as Tommy Robinson was getting arrested for yeah. terror offences. I, yeah. I don't exactly know what he'd done. You know, he yeah. had some peaceful protests uh, that, yeah. that were, you know, genuinely I think it was because he showed a video which was found to be untrue. Or, I can't. And that's what, right. So some yeah. controversial video, but it's still showing a video. You know, it's not. Yeah. It's not quite like nine eleven yeah. when it comes to terrorism. He but, should have shown child porn, mate. Then would have got a job at the BBC. Well, yeah, or or uh, it would have been covered up by the Labour establishment. Yeah, um, exactly. But uh, so he did that. He gets arrested under, t under terror offences the same week. Yeah. Uh, this Islamic preacher is trying to buy a Scottish island so he can set up uh, a Sharia home. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, man, you've already got Sharia homelands around the world. You don't need one in Scotland as well. But like, he's trying to set one up where they're going to have. He's already got like military training camps. They do military training in Buckinghamshire. Yeah. It's like, why on earth? Like, we've got terror police looking at some guys. Oh, there's this guy showing a film. It's like, no, this guy's got a military Sharia military training camp in Buckinghamshire. Are you, are you not going to do something about that? Sounds a bit more terroristy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but it's fine. Like, do you know what? I just think with all these lads, like when they try and set up like something on an island and, you know, it's going to be like Sharia law, it's just a sex cult. <laughs> That's all it is. That's what I'm, I'm worried about, those Scottish sheep. Yeah. I'm just, you know, those, it's an island. There's no women there. There's yeah. Probably won't be women there. No. I'm worried about those sheep. Yeah. They're, they're going to get bummed to within an inch of their life. But... Like, you know, that, I mean, that's where that's where we are as a society. That's where we are as a country. We're it's... a sheep bumming island dwelling society. <laughs> well, that was our culture, mate. And now it's getting eroded. Yeah, yeah. It's now getting ruined. And you, you do wonder what is going to be the end stage of this. Because the reality is it can't go on. Yeah. It can't go but on. But we're already sort of past the point where it can be rolled back. It's, man, I think... I think the people who lead us have really messed up. And it's like, man, all you had to do was look at Lebanon. All you had to do was look at the Balkans and, you know, learn the lessons of history. Yeah. It's going to be brutal. Let's... The food's going to be great. <laughs> man, that's, <laughs> that's what everybody says. But then, you know, people are like, oh, imagine, you know, Britain without the cuisine. And then you read a story about a 14-year-old victim of a grooming gang being put in kebabs. And it's like, man, you know, I think... And that was actually found to be untrue. No, it wasn't found to be untrue. It was. Wasn't uh, it? No, it was uh, basically. I thought it was. It was a. F it was it not? Or no, correct me if I'm wrong. We basically we don't know the the detective uh, who was leading that investigation who basically had covert surveillance yeah. uh, in this uh, kebab shop because somebody admitted to they had a tip off that this you know these guys had minced up this grooming gang victim who's still missing by the mm. way, um, so presumed dead and put her in the, in the kebab meat. And they, um, so they bugged the kebab shop, but one of the microphones was really close to a television, so it's hard to get a clear, clear audio from it. Mm. Uh, the transcription, what they should have done is used uh, somebody completely unconnected yeah. to the case to do the transcription, because you know, otherwise you're going to have your own bias yeah, yeah, yeah. affecting it. And they didn't do that. They had the, the detective do it. Um, they also, the case fell apart, I think, because they gave the, the initial guy who had um, who'd tipped them off, who heard this admission from one of, admission from one of the guys, yeah. they gave him a wire to wear yeah. and then to go and like try and extract, get another confession from yeah. these guys. Um, and he didn't get it. They sort of denied it. But then if somebody comes at you like saying, like, oh, can you just tell me again about the time you put a girl in the kebab meat? Like... Obviously, you're going to be like, uh, no, what are you talking <laughs> about? You know what I mean? So, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, apparently, the for the defense, it completely exonerated them, but I, I, I don't think it does. There's there's some controversy. The detective who led it was uh, was dismissed from the force, 
but she was reinstated. I think they wanted that to go away and they they didn't want anybody found guilty. It's like an O.J. Simpson type yeah. thing. It's like, uh, you know, they it would have created, a, it would have been a huge scandal because, you know, Britain will tolerate apparently infinite number, uh, infinite amounts of grooming gang activity um, and will tolerate a, a lot of uh, terrorism and, and deaths of children, mm. but like combining them. Yeah, is uh, where we draw the line. Apparently, let's let's talk about something a bit a bit cheerier. Although you know, I'm happy to be corrected. If anybody knows if that's uh, if I've got that wrong, then you know, email in. Yeah, email in. And remember, this is a comedy podcast. So what, what do we get? Where's the funny bit? Yeah, well, that's what I was thinking, well, yeah, mate. We need. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a. Did you see the thing? Well, of course you did, because you sent it to me. Yeah. But the uh, Colbert, Stephen Colbert. Oh yeah, that's it's, beautiful. So it's a chat show, a sort yeah. of lefty chat show, and somebody was on. I think Is there any other type of chat show? Well, there's there's Gutfeld, which I absolutely trounces them in the in the polls. There's also yeah. There's also this. Uh, but yeah, somebody from CNN was on Stephen Colbert. Yeah. Let's have a look at it. Trump has kind of been thrown on his heels by this, and he's not really sure how to go after Vice President Harris. He knew his attack lines on, on President Biden. He really has struggled with how to how to go after someone who's 20 years younger than him, who is a different gender, a different race. It, it's kind of been this moment where he has not been able to coalesce around a single attack line. I know you guys are objective over there, that you just report the news as it is. <laughs> Oh, I know. CNN makes a. I know. Is that supposed to be a laugh line? I wasn't supposed to be, but uh, I guess it is. Man, that's so that's so revealing. So that's yeah. a, that's a that's a Stephen Colbert late night talk yeah. show. So the audience, you know, it's a lefty show. The audience are all lefty. Yeah. So he said to the CNN woman, he's like, oh, you know, I know you guys just objectively report the news, and the audience fall about laughing. Yeah. Because it's so obviously <laughs> untrue. Yeah. I think this is what's happening with wokeism. Like, yeah. it's, it's falling apart because nobody really believes it. Nobody believes that, you know, CNN and the BBC and all these other, uh, and The Guardian, I mean, The Guardian's probably the worst. Yeah. But none of them, none of them believe that they're really objectively reporting the truth. There's like this, this bias and the tilt, this utopian. I know they're, they're pushing for this utopian yeah. society. They want everybody to get along. They want it to be true. So they're trying to twist the truth to, to fit that. But it's, it's just not working. Everybody can see through it. Well, this is a problem. You can only gaslight people for so long. If like we started trigonometry in 2018. Yeah. And at that point, I think it was at its peak in that people were scared. It was a very height of cancel culture. Everybody was living in this kind of state of perpetual fear. Like even audiences, you could just feel the fucking tension yeah. when you made even the slightest, edgiest joke. They'd be like, oh, God, fuck. Oh, oh, why? Yeah. Please don't make that joke. Yeah. Where it's like now, I, I, I remember it well. I remember getting <laughs> cancelled from like you know, places for doing jokes. Yeah, and, like... <laughs> you know, and it, you could see like white men literally having heart attacks at the back of comedy clubs. Yeah, and like now everyone's like, you've used the same weapons again and again. Yeah. All right, you call me a racist. Literally, every like the fucking dog's racist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's been completely like so many things are described. I mean, I, I tweet about it every time there's a, a new thing that I see that's been called racist. Yeah. I tweet, you know, what's racist today? Yeah. And it's literally fucking everything. If you go into Google and you say is X, you know, whatever yeah. it is, whatever it is, bananas. Fucking yeah. well, obviously bananas, but is uh, are avocados or car windscreens yeah. or. Uh, you know the, the the concept of Buddha or is this racist? It always comes back. Yes, somebody somewhere has been paid a government grant to do a PhD uh, proving that you know whatever it is horticulture yeah. or or parquet flooring or whatever it is is racist. Everything is racist. So when everything's racist, it means nothing's racist, and you know the words completely lost all its meaning. I think. What do you know my favourite is when they go. Like, when they bemoan the fact, when they go, oh, black women, if you don't find black women attractive, you're racist. Yeah, if you find black women attractive, you're fetishizing black women. Yeah. It's like... like, can, like can't I be both? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't it just be me having sex with them, an act of white supremacy? <laughs> Man, what, I dated that uh, Nigerian lassie. Yeah. And um, it's funny, mine, because you do, you do notice some, some cultural stuff. I remember I was, uh, I was kissing her and I was like, touching her hair and stuff and she had all these nobles yeah in her hair and i'm like what are these nobles yeah and what's going on with your head you got nobles in your head <laughs> and she's like she's like that's my weave that's where my weave is stitched and i'm like what's a weave yeah and she's like did you think this is my real hair 
And I'm like, yeah, of course. You know, I thought I thought you had this uh, perfectly straight hair yeah. with the uh, blue streaks. Yeah. And yeah, I thought that was that was your hair, but no, it's uh, yeah, that's that's what it was. Yeah. But you know, and so like, it, what they do is that it doesn't. It's a game of checkmate. Whatever you do, whatever you say, it was always going to be racist to the point you were saying that even engaging in the game made you racist. Yeah. So once you get to that point, then people are going to be like, you know what, go fuck your game. Ah, uh, yeah, and it's so it's so dumb to just call everything racist when it's obviously not racist. It's just so it's so dumb because you know there is racism out there. Is like, and some of the some of the fun of it, I found out that milk because I, I drink milk. Um, racist. <laughs> it is racist. Yeah. I was like, how it's can white. I was like, is it because it's white? You know, you know what it is. What? You know why it's racist? No. So apparently, uh, white people can are, are lactose tolerant. We can yeah. tolerate lactose, whereas a lot of people from like Africa and other parts of the world yeah. are lactose intolerant. Yeah. Because basically, what happened is it's quite interesting. In the old days, like obviously, you know, living in the northern northern latitudes or whatever, yeah. you don't have as much. Uh, you know, it's, it's more barren. Yeah, you've got yeah. to use whatever calories you've got. Yeah. So people would drink milk, even though they were lactose intolerant. Yeah, because they're men. And, yeah, because they're men. And over time, my ancestors forced their bodies to become lactose yeah. tolerant. So that, that was through the, the course of evolution. So that meant people had to die. People who were particularly lactose intolerant had to die. So their genes were eroded away and we were just left with white people who could digest milk. So when I'm drinking milk, it's a testament to the like my people wanted to drink milk so bad they were they were willing to die for milk. I mean, if you're gonna be willing to die for anything, milk is pretty like low down the list. But they didn't have as much stuff back then. Yeah, so. that is true. But it's like so that's why having lactose like I'm kind of mildly lactose intolerant, right? But I just, uh -huh. yeah, I know. But I just fucking drink it anyway. Yeah. Because, you know, because... You're a real man. Exactly. And you know what? It means that I've got sweaty hands, but other people have to fucking deal with my cold, clammy, wet hands. Yeah. Because I'm a man. <laughs> and oat milk uh, isn't real milk. It's not real milk. I don't uh, care. I, I lived in a warehouse, like this sort of artistic community thing. and like right, all yeah, How can a right-wing man live in a left-wing warehouse community? <laughs> yeah, it was Explain so... that one to oh, me. Oh, man, I just, I liked it. I liked the people. Like, when I moved in, it was when warehouses were still, it was like artists and stuff like that. And yeah. Then it became more like, you know, trust fund people yeah. and all the rest of it. It became less fun. It was druggies and, yeah. you know, chancers and wasters. But when I, when I moved in, it was a lot of, it was either people who wanted to live somewhere cheap with a lot of space uh, which was me, um, or, or people, you know, artists who needed a studio or whatever, and it was it was loads of it was loads of fun. I had like you know the Audi parked out front. I was getting up at seven in the morning to go to my corporate job with a weapons manufacturer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you actually tell them what you were doing? Yeah, of course. You know what I mean. Um, what, what was I going to say about the? Oh yeah, milk. Man, I was like, I was the weird one. I was the weird one in that yeah. warehouse. So like, you know, you go in the fridge and there's like, you know, loads of us. There's like twelve of us living there. I was the only person who drank milk milk that came out of a cow. Everybody else had like, you know, almond milk, oat milk, soy milk, whatever. Like all these things you can't, you can't even milk. You can't milk a fucking soy. It doesn't have tits. Yeah. Like you, I can, you can milk a horse. You can probably milk a, a Springer Spaniel, but you yeah. can't milk a fucking soy. No, exactly. It's basically glorified nut juice. It is. That's all it is. There's only one kind of nut juice I approve of. Exactly, mate. Anyway, moving on to Hugh Edwards. Huge, huge Edwards. Huge, huge Edwards. <laughs> huge Edwards. As, as he's known in the industry. Man, you know what? So Hugh Edwards, if anybody's watching in a civilised country and they're not aware of uh, Hugh Edwards, he was the BBC's number one newsreader. So the BBC is our sort of state propaganda service. Yeah. Um, and, it, and we love it dearly. Oh, we love it dearly. Yeah. And when dear leader Keir Starmer comes on, yeah. we, we all stop what we're doing. Yeah. And, and bow. We, yeah, and we bow. And spread our cheeks. And scrape. And uh, yeah, it, He's, he's truly a wonderful man. He uh, is. And applaud. fair and noble and kind. I applaud all of his, all of his laws. Yeah. Uh, if and only there could be more of them. Yeah. Well, I think... And do you know what you say that? But I think that even now, since we started this podcast, another 62 laws have yeah, been created. Man, if That's progress. If there's one thing the country needs, it's, uh, it's more like just deeply convoluted bureaucracy. And legislation. And legislation. We don't, we don't, have, we, we don't have enough 
of it. And you know, people people say that slashing bureaucracy is a is a way to a successful country, but no, this is uh, you can't trust people to do the right thing. No, you've got to force them to do the right thing with laws exactly. and with the police. But because yes, laws are because if you're against laws, that's white supremacy. Because oh. we all know that Hitler didn't bring in loads of laws. <laughs> yeah, Hitler, very fucking liberal, tolerant <laughs> guy who trusted in all his citizens. If anything, a libertarian. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, because really there's two kinds of people. There's people who want to control what other people are doing and people yeah. who don't want to control what other people yeah. are doing. And Keir Starmer is on the Hitler side of that equation. Uh, yeah. But we still love him dearly. And we, love he his is. Laws. Great man. Great man. Thank you. Dear leader. But, um, yeah, so Hugh Edwards is a Welsh man yeah. who uh, was the BBC's number one news reader. Yeah. So, you know, if you're looking for your BBC Verify, Fact Check, yeah. Truth, Hugh Edwards yeah. is your man. And, uh, you know, a truly trusted totem of yeah. society. Yeah. Uh, it was on nearly half a million pounds a year. Yep. Uh, it turns out it was also a massive nonce. Yeah, it turns out. Like, do you think, like, is it, every time I look at the BBC, I think chicken or egg. Yeah. Do you go into oh, the, the BBC? Chicken. Yeah. That's a good menu. It is a good menu, actually. But do you, do, when you have, uh, with, with the BBC, do you go in a paedophile or do you become a paedophile? <laughs> How does it work? <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's that's the thing because they do have this. They've got a reputation for having a lot of pedophiles. They've yeah. Jim, I mean, Jimmy Savile is probably like man, like he's like the. You know what I mean? He's like the the sort of Hulk Hogan. <laughs> the, the, not that Hulk Hogan, but like yeah. you know, in terms of you know, just the states amongst the the nonce community. Like nobody's nonced more. Yeah. Nobody's nonced harder. Yeah. Nobody's nonced longer than. No than one's nonced better. Jimmy Savile, he's, man, he's like, and also, he did all that nonsense while making some of the best Saturday evening television I have ever seen. And raising millions for spinal charities. Yeah, 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 and like, we all know that anybody who's raising money for charity, anybody who's, uh, you know, presenting an image of virtue is, uh, you know, I think Jim, Jimmy Savile proves that they're just doing it for purely virtuous reasons. Nobody who's virtue signalling ever does it uh, as, a, as a way of deflecting uh, you know, Actually, from... with Savile, it was more interesting because, uh, by the way, uh, that's why I really hated Hugh, um, Hugh Edwards, is that he never raised any money for spinal charities. That's right. So, fuck you. I'm glad you're going to jail. We well, probably not. Also, given... also the nonce stuff. Yeah. I'm glad he, he's going to jail for that. But you know the messed up thing about his... So I think... I, I don't know how long he got sentenced for. I think his, his crime had a maximum sentence of 10 years. Yeah. Um, it, he's probably not getting the 10 years. Yeah. But after he was sentenced, he was bailed to yeah. return home. Instead of, you know, you, you can, yeah. the judge can either be like, you're going straight to jail, like the rioters, you know, straight yeah. to jail. Hugh Edwards got bailed to return home. Yeah. So you got to wonder, why would you give, like, somebody who's been found guilty of um, possessing child porn? And, like, man, really horrific. I think, yeah. you know, when it, when it first came out, there was this idea, you know, Owen Jones was making excuses for him, saying, oh, this yeah. is just bullying by the sun and all that yeah. sort of stuff. No, no, he had category A, like the the most horrific images uh, yeah. on his phone. He was caught because there was another pedophile who yeah. he'd been liaising with, and he was sending him these these images. Uh, and it was over the course of like eight months. It wasn't like you know he received it. And he was like, oh, what on earth is this? And you know went to the police. It was like you know he was he was you know fully in the in the knowledge of you know yeah. receiving this stuff. Um, really horrific stuff. So why would you bail him to return home where you know who knows what he's got under the floorboards? Who yeah. knows what he's you know now currently in the garden hitting with a with a hammer to to get rid of you know what i mean like why would you why would you let somebody go free to start a... because that's progress <laughs> that's progress mate that's what it is that's what you know he's a good man and he was doing his best he's a, he's a he's a bad he's a bad man. i don't think i think what you're doing there is actually racist you know what they're going to they're going to do this they're going to they're going to i swear in about 5 years time if we don't crush this woke progressive nonsense. Progressivism just says progress is good for the sake of it. They don't think about what they're progressing towards or what the pro progression entails. If we don't, if we don't crush it, pedophobia is going to be a thing. And like Islamophobia is now. Yeah. Probably a bit of crossover in that <laughs> thing, But pedophobia is. Yeah. They're already trying to do it with the. Instead of calling them nonces or pedophiles, they're called minor attracted people now. Do you know what? And I. The thing is, is that they have superpowers. Yeah. Think about all of these nonces. There's a lot of them that are super fucking talented. R. Kelly. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Yeah. Bill Wyman from the Rolling Stones. Elvis Presley. Yeah. 
David Bowie used to sleep with 14, 15 year olds. It was the 70s, but that. Yeah, I sort of think with like David Bowie, like, and the Rolling Stones, like, they made cool music. Yeah, and, but and Bill it, wasn't, Wyman, it wasn't like eight year olds. It was 12, 13 year olds. Yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that, is, that is pretty bad. <laughs> and it was, you know, like, so. But on the other hand, give me shelter. Oh, what a you know tune. What I mean? too, and they tried to cancel that. Too much blood. It's, yeah. That's oh, probably a bad yeah. title to You know, up. like, so, look. And you look at Chuck Berry, Sweet yeah. Little Sixteen. Yeah, that came yeah. up on my playlist the other day. Man, if you listen to any heavy metal, any sort of hard rock yeah. song from the 80s, it's all just like, she's my cherry pie. Yeah. <laughs> cool drink of water, such a sweet surprise. She's 16 years old and her, gonna, her dad's going to beat me up and all this yeah. sort of stuff. It's yeah. all these hairy, stinky 25-year-olds talking yeah. about banging teenage girls. Yeah. And, and they're all like, and also half of, that's a, all. half of ACDC songs are like, you know, I'm the night crawler. Yeah. I hide in bushes. And it's like, man, this is... What are you admitting to here? <laughs> yeah, but it's admitting to something with a great beat and electric yeah. guitars and rhythm. Yeah. So it's absolutely fine. Um, uh, Have you ever were... heard the, girl, the the song Young Girl by no. Jerry Puckett and the Union? Jerry Puckett, that even sounds like rhyming slang. But it was, it was the old days. Yeah. It was the olden days. Yeah. It's like if you go back to medieval times. It's yeah. like Romeo and Juliet were like 12 years old or something. Yeah. But at least there wasn't like, one of them wasn't, 25. Yeah, whatever. exactly. I think I think Juliet was 12 or 13 and Romeo was 14. Yeah. You know who was the dodgy one in all of that? The friar who basically engineered it to happen. Right, yeah. You know? I and he... I don't know what happened. Well, it, I, I remember teaching Romeo and Juliet to kids and like coming away... I, and, uh, this was part of like, uh, you're a teacher at a school. This yeah, wasn't... Yeah, You weren't doing it in a van outside a park. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> and do you know what? I think if and you... And that's when I first heard this song. <laughs> I think if you were going to groom kids, it would be far more effective to pick something else than Shakespeare. <laughs> but I just remember, like, the friar was the one who was just basically helping the liaison. It's like, you're fucking enabling this. Yeah, yeah. That's why you don't trust religious men. Yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah, if you go back to medieval times, it's like people were, people were getting married. But people were going up chimneys, working. Yeah. Uh, when they were, like, five or whatever. So, yeah, it was just a, a different time. I mean, I guess now we've got... And this, man, this is what we sort of lose sight of. Like, there's still parts of the world that are still pretty medieval, and we're like, you know, inviting them here and imagining that when they, as soon as they step onto that sand at Dover, all of a sudden they become imbued with liberal Western values, and it's like, no, well, well no, you know, they're still he, they're still like that pop singer from the fifties. <laughs> well, here's the thing, you know, like uh, I remember, like, you know, you, you know, you do arts and crafts with the kids, man. And uh, we I, got them I to don't. make these slippers, right? I just want to make that clear. I, I don't do that. <laughs> so, right, as a teacher, we made arts and crafts with the kids. Yeah. And we got them to make these slippers. Yeah. And uh, like, I got my 10-year-olds to make these slippers. Absolutely terrible. I took out my Nike Air Max. I went, that was made by someone of your <laughs> age. You Look at that. Look at the quality. Yeah. Look at that. I can run with it. I can play football in it. It makes me look good. Look at this piece of shit. Well, Francis, you know what that tells me? That tells me that Nike are better at teaching and motivating children yeah. than you are. So, you know, if, if a Nike executive can get these kids to do that. Exactly. But that's why they're a multinational global corporation. That's a good point. You know, and that's, that's yeah. Did you, did you watch any of the Olympics? Obviously, there was the opening ceremony with We're the... Beautiful. Oh, just amazing. I'll, I'll, it's, you know, it's so edgy because they mock Christianity and I've never seen that done before. No, no, it's, it's great. It's certainly not something that's done in all main, mainstream yeah. things and is, is the like only acceptable religion to mock. Yeah. Uh, but there's also... I saw a fat Olympian. Let's see. Let's have a look at this. This is... I mean, guess the country. Oh, there's a flag on the sleeve. Yeah, uh, Mar oh, yeah perfect. America. But that's, that's a genuinely fat... Olympian, obviously it's, it's target shooting, so you don't really need to be skinny. Um, and there's also, do you see Ray Gun, the breakdown? Oh, she was beautiful. She, oh, she did a great, she did a great job. There's been a couple of funny memes. There's a <laughs> <laughs> transplanted into Street Fighter Two. <laughs> that one friend who just button mashes and manages to beat you all the time. Yeah. Was <laughs> was Ray Gun good? Well, do you know what? You know when people talk about cultural appropriation, I'm like, yeah. get to fuck. Then I saw her and I'm like, yeah, 
<laughs> Maybe you've got a point. <laughs> so basically, she like I thought it was all just like a bit of fun. Yeah. I thought it was like you know she knows that she knows what she's done. Yeah, she knows what she's doing. She's having a laugh with the whole situation. Yeah, but um, then she like released this thing, being all like, "Oh, people are cyber bullying me and harassing me, and yeah. this is bad." And it's like, man, why are you making it all so serious? And like, she also she was all like talking about the how it was bringing hate on the the street dance community, the broader street dance community. And it's like, man, if I'm, I'm not signing a petition for the broader street dance <laughs> community. You know what I mean? Well, like, come on, yeah. you're not, you're not the, you're not the Uyghur Muslims. <laughs> like, get a grip. Yeah, you know, I, you know, what I found it funny is I, I had sympathy for her, and then I found out she did a PhD in break dance. Oh my god! You know, I was just like, you know what? Fuck you. State subsidized. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Charlotte Gill. This this journalist has been doing uh, this great stream of of um uh like just bullshit degrees yeah and it's like it's so funny and this stuff and, and it's stuff that's funded by by the by the by the government people are getting funding to do these like absolute nonsense degrees proving that you know like horticulture is is white supremacist or whatever. yeah yeah and it's all it's all just like there's no possible um benefit to society what and are it, you talking about she did a phd in breakdancing she then went and did it in the olympics that's a good point and then brought joy to millions of people do you know like people are having a pretty shit time of it leo there's a cost of living crisis the country's descending into anarchy slash communism, so anarcho communism. Yeah. But this woman the worst brought, kind of communism. Yeah, exactly. This woman brought joy to billions. Yeah. Billions. Yeah, well, a few. Yeah. Thousands. That well look, when you saw that, did that not make you laugh and make you feel a little bit better? Yeah, it did actually. And also because the Olympics is all about so amateurs. You yeah. know, Eddie the Eagle is our Ed, Ed, Eddie the Eagle what's it called? <laughs> yeah, Eddie the that? Eagle. Eddie the Eagle. Yeah, Eddie Eric the Eagle. The Eagle. Eric the Eel. Yeah. <laughs> They're all named after children's characters. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, when he threw himself down that ski jump, even though, you know, I don't know what he did for a for a living. I think he, you know, stacked shelves or whatever. Yeah. That's that's what the Olympics is all about. I don't want to see like actual good athletes who've yeah. trained. No. Stuff. I want to see a big fat lass shoot, <laughs> shooting a gun at a target. Or uh yeah, somebody who's just having a go at break time. I mean it's not a real sport. You no. know what I mean? How dare you? It's not a real sport. How dare you? You know what I liked as well? It was just like watching someone's aunt yeah. take do that on a dance floor after one too many sherries. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, this is fucking brilliant. And half a Mitsubishi. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> wiggling around. Yeah. Go on, Auntie Cheryl. You're smashing it. Yeah. And the fact that she then starts whining about it. This is why I like the Americans. Remember the Hulk tour girl? Yeah. Right? She just went, right, that's it. We've got a line of merch coming yeah, out. Yeah, I'm yeah, going to yeah. appear on every podcast. I'm going on Bill Maher's show. Yeah. I'm going to like, I'm gonna fucking lean into it and make yeah. as much money as I can for my 15 minutes. That's what she should do. Yeah. She should bring out a line of merch. Those window wipers, she should then f- copyright it, bring out her own. Yeah. She should make a million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop it's, being a little bitch. It's a great Make idea. some money. Did you see David Lammy says the far right need to integrate? <laughs> <laughs> he needs merch as well. Yeah. You know, like, man, all I've got to say is the people being called far right now are much more tolerant than 99% of their ancestors. Yeah. And they're still getting battered over the head for not being tolerant enough. It's like, man, maybe if you made people this intolerant, we need to look at what's making people intolerant. Uh, also, there's uh, somebody got Trump tattooed on their head, and I think they're British as well. Let's have a look at this. So my name is Ray Monroe. Obviously, people are asking why I got this tattoo. At the end of the day, I absolutely love and appreciate what Trump has done for America. I think he's an absolute great person, and I just feel like he needs to be appreciated. Yeah, I mean, is I that think, real? That's. I think that's real. I don't know if she's just done it with a sharpie or something, but. It looks like a real tattoo because that's what they look like when you first get them done. Yeah, yeah. You know, they're all like, you know, yeah, before, shiny, yeah, 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 before they yeah. peel. Yeah. So, yeah, I think maybe that's. Maybe oh, you that's can't real. do that. I know. And it's like, I just think people are too indulging of, of people. I saw somebody the other day, like not in real life, but um, on the internet, they had uh, like a sort of mohawk, but it was yeah. made out of skin. They'd had implants in to stretch their skin up and make it into a mohawk. And it's like, man. 
you know, I think plastic surgeons and tattoo artists need to learn, and, and gender clinics need to learn the power of no. Yeah. It's like just because, because I think a lot of people feel something's, they feel bad or whatever, but they're like looking in the wrong place to fix it. It's like getting your dick cut off might not be the, you know, universal panacea for your depression. It's... Transphobia, mate. <laughs> yeah, it's that's super like you know I just think like as uh, if you're a tattoo artist I am yeah but you know if someone comes in and is like I want this tattoo and I want it I, I've never had a tattoo before but I want it on my eye yeah like is there not a part of you that goes no you're clearly mental yeah you're insane and yeah. like if you want this much plastic surgery that you just you look like a melted he-man doll like, that's too much plastic surgery. People get addicted. Like, Michael Jackson was addicted to having plastic surgery. He loved the whole process of it. Yeah. He loved the anaesthetic. He died, you know, yeah. with the propofol, overdose propofol is an anaesthetic that, like, you know, completely blocks you, you know, yeah. blots you out. So, you know, he loved he loved that part of it. And he loved the, the sort of uh, going under, being looked after and, and recovering. Um, but I think there's got to be some sort of duty of care. And I think this is, you know, we've lost all the... We've lost all the, you know, the the religion, the social structures that yeah. kept people in place. It's called and, shame. And yeah, and the, and the shame and like and in its place, you know, we've got this incredible freedom, but not everybody copes well with freedom. Well, it's like you know, I think I think a point to be made here is like everybody wants freedom until they actually get it, mm. and then it's kind of terrifying. Because well, because once you 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 have freedom, like you can do anything. And that essentially means that you then you can do a deep dive into your own destruction. Well, yeah, and also it means that you yourself personally have to be responsible for for your life. And that's you know, as a as a man, that can be that can be difficult. You can spend all day in bed wanking. You can smoke weed Not all day. Age, mate. You can drink. It's you know like that, and that's why uh, getting married is good for you because yeah. all of a sudden you've got that structure in your life. You you've yeah. got that sort of duty and responsibility. You outsource your destruction to a woman. Exactly, it's a yeah. different kind of destruction. <laughs> it's a different <laughs> financial and mental <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. E ego. Yeah, ego destruction. Yeah. Um, somebody also tried to slag Donald Trump for not having many people at his uh, rally. Uh, this is quite funny. So this is the tweet breaking Trump. It's from this guy William Legate. Yeah, Legate. Uh, breaking Trump has ordered his team to literally cover up entire levels of venues he's unable to fill with black cloths uh, make... it sounds like our gig on uh, on Saturday the, <laughs> the 20 no Friday the 23rd of August 23rd of August no we're gonna we're gonna fill that I yeah mean, it's a bit smaller than the stadium it's a 120 seater but... Hammersmith Comedy Club the links in the description yeah it's already been described as uh, what far right rally yeah. masquerading as comedy. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, because yeah, I think that's how Hitler started off. He started off with a uh, <laughs> comedy club in Hammersmith, and then guys, what's the deal with <laughs> airplane food? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things just things just <laughs> spiraled from there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, then somebody pointed out, somebody zoomed in on the crowd. And it's like, oh, what's that? A Harris placard. Yeah. So uh, this isn't a Trump. Yeah. Thing. Like, you know, you know, look, there is lots to criticise on Trump. There is yeah. lots that you can criticise on him. I hate when people go like, oh, you know, they make up bullshit things like he can't draw a crowd. No one in no. politics or comedy can draw a crowd. And basically, Trump is a fusion of those two things, <laughs> right? Like, no, if, but he can. He draws huge, huge crowds. Imagine if, imagine if Trump went, you know, you know what? I'm just going to actually, guys... Here's the thing, my Netflix special is coming out in two weeks. Yeah. That would be the most watched Netflix special yeah. in the world, and, regardless. And probably the funniest as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got a natural man, he's just got this natural comedic talent. Like yeah. when he was when he was uh, being questioned by uh, by a journalist and it was this woman, I think she was from Fox, and she's like, Mr. Trump, you've described women as Oh, it's Megan Kelly. Megan Kelly, she's like, you've described women as disgusting as fat pigs and he's like no 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 only Rosie O'Donnell and it's like, <laughs> man that's just like a killer line that's such a brutal line yeah. no other politician would, would do that I got I got to say though like I think uh, I think Trump's rattled by Kamala because he doesn't 
like people have people have said this. I, I didn't invent this. People people have said he doesn't know. In fact, that woman was saying yeah. it when she was talking to Stephen Colbert. He doesn't know how to attack her. He's, he he was trying to do this sort of you know attacking her on her identity and stuff. And it's like no, that's sort of playing into her. No. Nah. Into her hands, you should totally. And this is somebody you can definitely attack on their their performance in office because she's been in office for four years, mm. and you know it's been pretty atrocious if you look at. And she's responsible for the border, and so you know millions of people have come across, and it's clearly a sort of cynical ploy to tilt the electoral balance. Yeah. They're giving voting rights to these people. It's you know uh, it's it's really cynical and it's really destructive and anti democratic. So man, attack her on that stuff. Don't be all like, you know, uh, she's a woman, uh, she's she's black. That's just like a dumb thing to, to say. And that's not going to appeal. He, the trouble with Trump is he's always appealing to his base when he needs to appeal to people who might vote for him. Yeah. The, his base are already going to vote for him. Well, well, this is it. And it's also as well, like, the best attack I ever saw uh, done to Car- Kamala was, um, actually, she was a former guest on the show, Tulsi Gabbard. Have, oh, you ever yeah. se- have you ever seen her attack on Kamala Harris? No, no. It's utterly brilliant. It's about five minutes. This was during the Democrat uh, Democrat presidential election, I think in 2016. Um, and she just went in. She was like, Kamala says that she's progressive. You know, she and she, you know, says that, you know, she's a black woman and, you know, she's pro-black and all the rest of it. But actually, let's look at what she did. Uh, during her time as yeah. prosecutor in California. She put more black men in prison for marijuana offences than any other governor before or since. Yeah. Than every other prosecutor. And she just went bam, bam, bam. And she just absolutely eviscerated her. Like, these aren't high-caliber people. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like you're going up against, you know, like a Bill Clinton or a Margaret Thatcher, or, yeah. or Tony Blair. Say what you like about Blair, but he was a maestro of a politician. Yeah, yeah. You're not going up against these big hitters. Yeah. You're going up against Kamala fucking Harris. Yeah, and Kamala, honestly, she a lot of times she sounds uh, she, like she's got terrible ideas and can't even articulate yeah. those, those ideas properly. Um, a bit like me. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, like when she was talking about equity. Yeah. I'm, fine, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up. Equality suggest often everybody should get the same thing. Well, that often assumes everybody started out in the same place, as opposed to equity, which is everyone should end up in the same place. And if you then understand not everybody started out in the same place, you understand some people need more. So we all end up in the same place. But basically, she's talking about equity yeah. and how it's this important thing to have. So equity, you know, you can have equality, which means everybody's got the same rights, everybody's yeah. got the same opportunities, yeah. as, you know, as much as possible. But she says for equity, everybody's got to be at the same level. Yeah. So you've got to, uh, you know, chop some people's legs off to, you know, so that they're the same height, and you've yeah. got to, uh, you know, give take resources off some people and give it to these people. But if you have equity, what's the point in like? It's, it's basically communism. It's like, yeah. what's the point in striving to, to work hard, you know, striving on the commune to, to grow more crops if you're not getting any of the reward, if you're not getting any of the... And in fact, oh. if you try to grow more crops, you, there's a chance you get in trouble for making another important communist official look bad because he hasn't grown as much. So then you get sent to the gulag for being too successful. Uh, or if, you know, you, you then have a bad harvest, you get accused of being a wrecker, as yeah. Stalin called them. But, but, you know, it's also as well, it's like, you could listen to Barack Obama basically make any argument. Yeah. And at the end of it, you're like, ah, you know what? I just, I just like you so much. Yeah, fucking let's set up gulags. That's great. <laughs> you know, I, you know, some people, I, I know some people are bad. Some people have the wrong opinion. So you're right, Barack. It's the only way we're going to get rid of them. Like her, like she's not, she's not particularly articulate. Yeah. She's not a pa- she's not a powerful presence. She sounds drunk a lot she, of the time. She's not. She sounds drunk. And I'm she's, saying that as a Scottish person. <laughs> you got you listen to a Obama was an incredible orator who was powerful, who yeah. moved you with his words. Like what camera? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's you know, Obama was what he was a law professor from a, I think an Ivy League, one of the Ivy League universities. Yeah, it's a different caliber of human being. Yeah, yeah, but she somehow made it to be like district attorney in California, well, and apparently she fucked her way to the. Oh top. yeah, she went out with uh, what's his name, Willie Brown. Yeah, 
And we sound, <laughs> that sounds like a racial. I'm like, yeah, she sucked his. He's Willie, Willie Brown. Brown. Uh, but um, yeah, she she went out with him. She was his side piece, and also Montel. What's he called? Montel, Montel Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, she did she did do a bunch of that, but it worked out for her. But like to be DA, you clearly got to have some sort of smarts. I just I don't know how she hides them so well now. And she's also man, she's. Uh, She's pretty much just appealing. If you look at the demographics of America, if it wasn't for single women, if it wasn't for, I think, just single white women, yeah, uh, they are by far the only group that like votes Democrat. Uh, obviously, you know, um, if, if you look at um, uh, black yeah. people are going to vote Kamala, you know, it's a sort of, I guess, an identity thing as well as a Democrat thing. Uh, but Kamala just absolutely mops up that single yeah. white woman vote and i think part of this is because man women white women aren't having kids like they used to and yeah. they see it they've been sold this lie you know the the guardian tells them oh don't have kids you know go and have margaritas with the girls be fun uh be be liberal don't if you have kids it's patriarchal if you have a husband yeah. it's patriarchal and we've got a video here of this woman um have you seen this the woman no. oh man here we go. So this is a... Because basically G.D. Vance came out and, and accused um, Kamala voters of being childless cat women. Oh, yeah. Because that'll get them on side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is one of those childless cat women made a video about it. Being child-free threatens the patriarchy. You know, like, that has undone all the good work Eminem did. <laughs> you remember when, like, people were like, white well, people can't rap, and then Eminem <laughs> came along and it's like, Meh. and yeah. now this is this is just undone. You know, that, that, is, that is a hate crime, man. Yeah. And you know that Taylor Swift has frozen those eggs. Oh, man, this, this is the you thing. You know that she's frozen those eggs. People don't get that, like, you know, they're like, oh, I'm I'm being... It's like you've been sold a lie yeah. by, like, a, by a corporate, a corporatocracy that wants you to keep working because they're making money off you. It's like when people say, oh, my, my company's incredibly progressive because they will pay for me to fly to this place where you can get an abortion and they will uh, pay for me to have my eggs frozen. It's like, that's not... They're not doing it to be nice. They're doing it to make money, to yeah, keep making money off you. Uh, I, I don't know why why people can't see that. And honestly, you like you totally can have. Ki I just don't think a society without kids, like, is a sort of sick society. People don't have that. They don't see the the joy that that kids bring, and they don't see. And also, apart from on airplanes, they can fuck off on airplanes. Especially, man, I can understand why people, if you, if your only experience of kids is on airplanes, I can see why you think having kids is a bad idea but you, you've got to understand most of the time when you've got a kid you're not on an airplane <laughs> <laughs> so the kid is in a much better mood yeah but man like uh, there's there's some wrong with the society that doesn't doesn't have kids kids are great you know and, and there's all this because these women aren't having kids they've got all this like empathy yeah and this caring that's sort of curdling and going in different directions like one of my friends she's she kind of is like the bold lib woman um, doesn't have kids, isn't probably isn't going to have kids now. She's in her late thirties, um, and she's all like, "Oh, we must, you know, no, we have to have open borders, and we have to care for these poor men that yeah. are coming over." And it's like you should be directing that empathy and that caringness to to a child. Yeah. But because you don't have a child, you're directing it at people who you know, yeah, might not be as nourishing to you and as kind to you as, a, as your child. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I think also the problem as well is like, you know, we women have been screwed, like you said. They've been sold a lie. I've seen the videos. Yeah, I know. And to be fair, they've been screwed magnificently. But you, they've been sold a lie. You know, it's as well like under the current economic system, both parents have to work. So that invariably means that you're going to have less kids because you can't afford it. Or fewer kids, I should say. Yeah. But the property situation, the fact that no, no government, yeah. has done anything about the property crises yeah, around yeah. the world. It's just horrific. Like, how can you expect people to put... This is where I actually have a lot of sympathy for younger people. When they turn around and go, ah, uh, yeah, we've been fucked, so what are you going to do? And you're like, yeah, you kind of have. You yeah. know, like, how are you going to... How do you expect people to be conservative when all of the stuff that makes you conservative, like acquiring capital, wealth, property, yeah. a family... 
you've kind of been shut out from doing it. Yeah, no, I'd, I'd agree with that. And the thing is, it's all these all these regulations. If you wanna if you wanna buy a house, if you wanna build a house, there's so much regulation and red yeah. tape. Now, if you wanna build a block of flats, you got to also build like make sure there's a whole different block of flats for like social housing. So yeah. you're not making money off that one. You're just making money off this. So the the base of the cost of that is transferred onto whoever's buying these flats. So the cost of property is astronomical because of all these regulations. If you look at um, if you look at Argentina and also like I don't know people are so dumb. All the lefties are like oh. Houses are rents are high because of landlords greed. Land, it's like all these uh, all these comedians in Edinburgh, and they're like, "Oh, rents are so high in August because landlords are greedy." It's like, well, why? How, how do we? How do landlords then forget about being greedy in September? Yeah. How do they stop being greedy then? It's obviously not greed. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, Otherwise, yeah. they'd they'd still Some be market. greedy. They'd still be greedy in September. It's absolutely ridiculous. And in Argentina, where they slashed all the regulation on housing right. and, and all the rest of it, they saw a, a pretty much instant increase in the supply of housing by over 200%. Yeah. So it's really, you know, it's really loosened up that market. I know a lot of people now um, don't want to rent out houses. You know, they might have a spare property or whatever. They're selling it because you can't, like, there's so much regulation. Yeah. There's so much, you know, onerous tax and, you know, everything's your fault. And if the person doesn't pay, you can't evict them anymore. There's no fault. They've got rid of the 12-month no-fault evictions. Exactly, yeah. So, like, man, you can understand why... Um, you know, all this stuff that's, you know, they're like, oh, we're, we're helping tenants. Yeah. And it's like, no, you're you're harming tenants because the people who provide that service, who provide that product, don't want to do it anymore. Well, this is the problem with that part of the left. They're economically illiterate. When actually what they should be doing is campaigning for more, for deregulation yeah. so that more, more properties can be built, including council houses, yeah. including affordable properties. You need to incentivize companies to build that that yeah. kind of that kind of property maybe by tax breaks and going look if you do this you'll get a certain amount of tax breaks which means you can increase your profit line on yeah. this but then just doing doing away with this all this regulation oh you got to build this much social housing you know what we should move away there shouldn't be any social housing everybody should be earning money standing on their own feet and if property was cheap enough we wouldn't need social housing yeah exactly but you know the problem is it's just we Every conversation that we have is so backwards. We're never actually honest about the problems, the solutions, or what to do. Yeah. Instead, we just have this retarded conversation about, oh, landlords are greedy. Yeah, okay, some landlords are greedy. Yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, That's what, human nature. Also, like, if they're greedy, they can't put the price up like beyond what people will pay. They can't yeah. put it up above the market rate because people won't pay that. They'll, yeah. they'll pay another supplier. That's the beauty of the market. The The price is just a, an information point that tells, you know, if the price is too high, then it tells other people who can supply that product, well, you should enter the market now. You should stop using this property as, you know, whatever it is and, and convert it into flats or you should you should build more flats. But because of all the regulation and red tape, they can't do that. And Keir Starmer's solution seems to be to build on the green belt, which is a pretty catastrophically terrible idea. I think what what we should what we should do is have like net zero migration. Mm -hmm. So still, I mean, I'm I'm in favour of like migration, but it's got to be like so it won't destabilise the country, and it's yeah. got to be you know as much as possible high quality people. Yeah. You know the the like you're saying the eye surgeon or, or whatever. Yeah. Because uh, at the moment we're we're not doing that, um, and that you know if you don't have 1.2 million people coming into the country every every year who all need somewhere to live, then you're gonna you know if you don't have that pressure, then you're already taking a lot of burden off the, mm. off the property market. And like everybody who needs to be housed, it's all got to be paid for by the taxpayer. Of in course, the end. of so, course. You spend on people like you and me, mate. <laughs> it's a fucking disgrace. It's amazing how conservative you get when you start paying tax. Yeah, it is, like, man. I tell you what, for the, I'm not even earning a lot, just a <laughs> decent amount. And I'm just seeing everything like, mate, fuck it, I'm, go I'm leaving. I'm going to you, Dubai. You, because I'm, I know somebody else is genuinely uh, moving to Dubai. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the way the, the UK is going. And weirdly, uh, you think moving to the Middle East, um, like he says they handle uh, radical Islam much better in the Middle East. Oh, yeah, they do. Like, they they at... don't fuck about. Have you ever yeah, seen yeah, that yeah. speech from one of the... Um... Jordan. Sorry? The, the King of Jordan. No, it wasn't. It was another one. It's, it's a guy from uh, the UAE. 
and right. he was talking i can't remember what it was uh but he was talking about the fact that europe and in particular the uk does not deal with Islamists effectively. Yeah, yeah. And he was going, yeah, you can't fuck about with these people. You yeah. just got to get... And that's what he said, and he's Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, he said you can't fuck about with these people. But, that, I mean, that was... Yeah. He put it in a much more articulate way than I did. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a, it's a culture where... The, the, the sort of... The, the Islamists understand force. Like, yeah. sort of brute force yeah. and power. Yeah. Uh, so that's why, you know, uh, Iraq was ruled by Saddam Hussein. Yeah. And not by... The Green Party. You know what I mean? <laughs> Even though their values do align. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they certainly do. Yeah. So do you, do you reckon you're going to move to America? I, I think a uh, long term, I'd love to move to America. I just, I think the, the, the progress, or the, not the progress, the direction of travel that we're seeing in this country, yeah. I think is pretty much unsustainable. And uh, it's kind of impossible to wind back yeah. as well. It's uh, and if you look at what's happened, so in Lebanon, for example, we had you know the, it was you know set up as a Christian country. I think the UK set it up. There was my family from there. From, I, my grandfather was originally Lebanese, and then went to Venezuela. Um, Venezuela, yeah, right? Turn, no of the, turn of the twentieth century as yeah. a sort of refugee. Yeah, um, yeah, they got the fuck out of Lebanon. Right, right, and then like the. Did your mum come from Venezuela yeah, as, a yeah, yeah. as a refugee? Yeah, well... And so, now you're going to America as a refugee. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's who I am, mate. That's what I am. So, yeah, so they went to Venezuela, like my grandfather went to Venezuela because they were Lebanese Christians. Yeah. So they went to Le uh, Venezuela and the turn of the 20th century and... Uh, open up shops and whatever else made a lot of money yeah and that's how that's what they did because they got the hell out of lebanon yeah because they were you just got you know what happened to their country and the way it descended yeah and it used, it used to be a really prosperous beirut was called the you know the paris of the, the middle, east. middle east and it was really prosperous and happy and stable yeah and uh, that was when it was majority christian yeah and then yeah there's waves of uh, you know islamic Im immigration po population growth and obviously the palestinian refugees going yeah. in there that you know were armed and yeah uh, had, the, had the backing so they could really you know destabilize things and go to war and i think they'd already been ch chucked out of jordan when they had, they went to war with the government there is that yeah. the front door that is the front door Shall I just go it's see the Lebanese it? authorities. It's the think. Lebanese, yeah, it's Keir Starmer. Oh, yeah, Keir Starmer. He's, uh, so, yeah, so your, yeah. your grandparents got out of Lebanon. So, yeah, so it was my great grandfather got out of Lebanon, um, went to Venezuela, uh, made a life for themselves there. But um, I, I, don't, I just don't think people understand what actually happened with Lebanon. I don't understand it well enough, if I'm being honest, but. And as and seeing the implosion of a once beautiful country, yeah, to the point where it's been in perpetual civil war for decades now, yeah, and people don't seem to be learning the lessons of what happens with radical Islam once it it comes into a country and infests within that country, yeah, because it's not just the war; the whole political system is now a uh, complete basket case, and there's so much corruption, yeah. and um, it's just you know incredibly mismanaged. Yeah. Um, to the point that, I mean, remember that big fertilizer explosion yeah. uh, that was like an atomic bomb going off. Um, but yeah, you you never see a sort of country that's been sort of taken over by radical Islam or hugely influenced by radical Islam that's, you know, a shining success story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's, you know, it, that's exactly it. It's like, you know, when a, a woman becomes ultra woke, they never get more attractive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they you never get... go. Oh, <laughs> oh, you're fat and you've got blue hair now. Yeah, oh, and fantastic. you've shaved your head. Yeah. <laughs> these, these are all massive improvements on your appearance. Yeah, and generally shows that you are in a positive and healthy mind space. Yeah. Do you think there's going to be a big wake up call? Like, not necessarily a, you know, a big terror incident like you know the Manchester Arena mm. bombing, but. Um, but something like you know France, I think, is further down the road than yeah. than we are. Um, so a European country could really tip over the edge and reach a, a sort of inflection point soon that could be a wake-up call for other European countries because we're already see, seeing across Europe, you know, as, as Britain's, you know, tilting to the left mm. uh, or the authoritarian left, a lot of, a lot of uh, countries in Europe are tr at least trying to tilt to the right, even if, you know, in France they sort of use... You know, electoral rigging to to keep them out. They they use the cordon sanitaire, and you know, Gert mm. Wilders is denied. You know, becoming prime minister in uh, in the in the Netherlands. 
and um, and the AFD in Germany, you know, they're coming under police investigation to try and you know stifle them. There's still the you know the, the democratic will of the people is pushing to the right because they don't like what they're seeing. Yeah, I think look, you can do the Keir Starmer thing, which is call far right, you know, and use that as a way to stamp out and. Of course, far right, far Fuggery. yeah, you know, obviously, rioting and looting is unacceptable. So but, unless unless it's for BLM, then yeah. it's good for some reason. <laughs> but um, but I I just think that the tactics they're using are a short term solution. Yeah, yeah. And really, what you're not doing is dealing or looking at the underlying issues that are causing these problems. Yeah. Trump, you know, Farage, they're just symptoms of a very, very severe and real problem that yeah. is bumbling, uh, bubbling underneath the surface. And also Trump and Farage, people are like, oh, the far right. It's like, they're, they're not. They're actually kind of in the centre. They're kind of where we need to be as a society. Like, where people are a lot more conservative than the left imagines. And I think we've been, the government's been, there's so many special interest groups and NGOs that are, you know, real far left yeah. and funded by George Soros or funded by, by whoever, that have the ear of the government, have the ear of politicians. And, you know, regular people don't really pay much attention until the shit hits the fan. And I think the shit is going to hit the fan in the UK. By 2029, we won't be able to finance our public sector pensions. So there's going to be a, you know, a huge financial crunch. Reckoning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, uh, I think that's going to, that's going to, I think as soon as there's some sort of economic impact, it's going to make people prick up their ears and be like, wait a minute, Like I trusted you to run this stuff. I wasn't paying attention. I was watching Strictly Come Dancing. And while I wasn't paying attention, you've listened to all these far-left NGOs and you've done this to the country. And we've yeah. had you know, m mass immigration and now there's sectarian warfare breaking out across the country. We've got the balkanization of Britain with some areas you know, Muslim run or whatever and, and other, and you know, people aren't happy. You can't call everybody far right man i think that i think the shit's gonna hit the fan in a in a big way so that sounds I'm, like a hell of a weather report i think <laughs> if we look up a rother and we can see the balkanization <laughs> yeah. of society and right over to roger we can see a full-on race war happening here yeah 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 man i don't know i don't know if we can laugh like, and i think if numbers were were lower we weren't seeing this like just really rapid uh increase and in really rapid immigration we'd have much more chance of sort of integrating people and you know people becoming British, for want, of yeah. a, for want of a better word, but I think it's all just too rapid. And it makes me wonder, just before we go, I'm going to end on this, it makes me wonder if a lot of these far left people um, are actually far right accelerationists. I mean, if yeah. you look at, you know, some of these, some of these far left groups, um, like Matthew Collins, for example, yeah. he was in the National Front. Yeah. Now, now he's pushing for, you know, open borders, mass immigration, yeah. uh, trying to, you know, suppress any, any symptom, any dissent. And that's exactly what a far right accelerationist yeah. would do. So are they as far left? Are all these NGOs and all these far left people as far left as they say? Or are they actually trying to foment some kind of disorder so they can topple capitalism and bring in, uh, you know, either either a, a far right system or bring in, bring in communism? Because, um, I mean, the, the left marched with the Islamists in Iran before, yeah. before the Iranian revolution. And then after the revolution, um, they got... Uh, jailed and executed by the Islamists. So there's only one way to find out. Come to our show on the <laughs> 23rd of August, Hammersmith Comedy Club. Yeah. The link is in the description. It's it's going to be a good show. We're going to be doing some classic stand-up comedy, and we're going to be doing some new material that might get us arrested. So come to that come to that show, 23rd of August. Yeah, Keir Starmer will be there. And if he's not, he's certain that he will get some people to monitor us. That's right. Okay, that's it for the publicly available thing. If you want to see us go off the rails and destroy our careers, you're going to have to pay and sign up to the Patreon and see the extended version. Pay your money! <laughs>